Hello everyone, well it's time to film the video to answer the questions put to me in my Ask Ibasic video and uh, in that short video I asked if you've got a question you'd like answered on my channel ask it below this video and I think I said vacuum cleaner related pretty sure I did so if you've asked anything not vacuum cleaner related don't expect it will get answered it's not an ask me anything thing no ask me about vacuum cleaners I've just made a video so dear me just made a video the first new sort of unboxing I filmed this year and it's an absolute stinker I have to say here it is an absolute stinker so far um, it's already falling to bits within a few minutes of using it bits are dropping off it do not buy one right don't even want to look at it okay well let's get on and while Daisy is sat next to me licking the first two aren't related to vacuum so I'll, I'll skip through those right Apu Rana asks what do you think of central vacuums I think they are objectively the best way to vacuum a house especially if they're equipped with a good quality power nozzle PS I would love to see a lind house featured on your channel right what do I think of central vacuums I don't have any experience of central vacuums they are not popular in the UK I expect the market for central vacuums in the UK is absolutely minuscule it's not like you can even look on Amazon you might look find a couple on Amazon if you scroll past an awful lot of other vacuums they're just not something that British houses have in them if somebody wants to have a central vacuum in a UK house I would think it's quite a lot of mess and upheaval to fit one um, just like having new central heating fitted if you haven't got any central heating in your home especially an older home with solid walls and not just sort of partition walls that are easier to put pipes in so I haven't got one um, unless I win the lottery and can get my own house built it's very very unlikely I'll get one because if I had one I'd have it installed while a new house was being built because I don't want the upheaval there's no point in having a central vacuum in the house I live in now it's just not big enough to, to warrant it I like the idea of having a motor and a bagless or a bagged device some somewhere away from the living area and sockets on the wall where you could just plug the hose in so all the noise is completely away from you and of course you can even have the exhaust air vented outside the home so I can see it being a very good option if you've got allergies and you want something that's just going to get rid of the dirt and it's not going to pass through even the best filters it's just going to go outside but yeah it's not something that you will see on my channel it's very unlikely you'll see it PS I would love to see a lint house featured on your channel you may be waiting a long time that's all I'm saying okay next question just got to quickly uh, scan it right Brian T hi sir Roger I'm not sir Brian and I never will be because in the very unlikely event of me being offered a, a serdom a knighthood that's it a knighthood I'd refuse it so I'm not a sir but anyway thank you Brian hi sir Roger first of all thank you for all you do for us VAC fans, question, from your experience, which vacuum manufacturer is the most friendly and responsive to consumer comments and ideas and recommendations for design improvements? I have an idea for an upright that I would like to send to one of the companies, but I really don't know who would be the most open to suggestions. Any ideas? Merry Christmas and a happy 2022 to you, your family and all the doggies. Um, well... I can't answer that uh, the thing is I've probably had a better experience with some manufacturers because they know I've got a vacuum channel and they know if they if they don't treat me very well I'll go and bitch about them on this channel um, so whenever I've had a problem 
I don't say, <laughs> I don't, I don't email them and say, do you know who I am? I'm going to blah, blah. Sometimes, no, I don't. But the people that have, I've, the companies I've dealt with, obviously, if I've had a problem, they sort it out. So I can't say, um, I would say Shark probably listen to customers more. And that's only from my experience. I've seen improvements made to their vacuum cleaners. Um, changes I've commented on things in the past and I found I mean I'm not saying it's down to me but I have found things that have are wrong with sharks and I've seen improvements made I would say the worst probably Dyson for listening to customers because the number of customers they've only just started now um, putting out cordless cleaners with a permanent on off switch but if you look at Dyson reviews a lot of people say I don't like having to keep my finger on the trigger it hurts my finger I've got arthritis it's very difficult and yet they kept that design and still use that design to this day and yet they must see feedback from customers but so I would say and I don't know if this is true but I, I consider Dyson to, the, to be the most arrogant company and I think they're losing market share now because of that you've got to listen to customers if you don't give the customers what they ask, if you think you know best, then you'll see your market share go down and you'll see other manufacturers who listen to their customers, they tend to sell more. Hence, Dyson's on the way down and Shark are on the way up. Whatever you think of those brands, it's a fact. So I can't say, personally, just send your idea to as many companies as you can. You might find that the smaller companies who are trying to grow might be more responsive to the behemoth companies who are, are huge anyway and don't want to listen. But you've got to be careful giving an idea to a company. They might say they're not interested and a few months or a couple of years down the line, you'll see a vacuum cleaner come out with all your ideas. So you've got to be careful about sharing ideas with companies because some of them will just take the idea and uh, do their own thing. Thank you for the question, Brian. Ian Bailey, my contact lenses are playing out and you can see why I don't show my face much on my channel. I look like Captain Birdseye's grandfather at the moment. I'm gonna shave all this off. Uh, that'll take 10 years off my face. But at the moment, with this chunky jumper on, I do look like a fisherman. Right, Ian Bailey. Hi, Roger. In your personal experience, which classic Hoover brush roll performs the best on your newer plush living room carpet in, ter in terms of carpet lines and overall satisfaction of use? Agitator or activator? Keep up the good work. Well, it's very hard. I would probably say the agitator has a slight advantage over the activator. Both work very well on this carpet, the plush carpet. Both groom well. Ah, it's, mm, maybe the activator grooms slightly better. There are more brushes, as long as it's a new activator and not worn. There are more brushes on an activator. But then the old fashioned hoovers with the beta bars, the metal beta bars, I think they're better for deep cleaning. They're certainly more satisfying to watch you check back on the videos I've done with the beats as it sweeps as it cleans hoovers and especially the shots I do sort of the low down shots and you can see boop, 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 all the bits bouncing up and down I love that shot that's why I do it um, the old-fashioned agitator does have more agitation I would say than the activator but both it's there's little in it but I would say the traditional beats as it sweeps, as it cleans agitator, just beats the activator to the post, but both are pretty good. So there we go. Right, here's a question from Gobind Shergill. Hey Roger, my question is, have you ever had a used vacuum cleaner explode or catch fire upon switching it on? Yes. Have you not watched my videos? Not quite catched fire. The worst one, the one that made me poo my pants, uh, would have been the Miele. And I knew it was going to blow up somehow because it said when I bought it. And I thought, no, it won't. I had to look at it before I switched it on, but yeah. 
it did it sort of went bang a bit look out for the flames i'm going to zoom in anyway and see what happens but the camera is uh, a safe distance and hopefully i'll be a safe distance away from this vacuum when i plug it in Oh, <laughs> blimey. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so that Miele, and I've had odd, um, there was an Electrolux upright that uh, the suppressor decided to blow. And the suppressor in that model was in the handle, so it was very near my hand when I switched it on, and that made me soil myself ever so slightly. Um, and I've had other Hoovers that have my hoover senior my newer hoover senior the almost mint new in the box one the uh, suppressor started to go on that when i was using it but it didn't explode i just started getting the smell horrific smell coming from the machine um so i switched it off before any damage happened but when i opened it up there was stuff stuff oily stuff brown liquid coming out of the suppressor so i knew that it would have possibly blown so I just removed it um, and a Hoover Sensatronic System 1 check that video that started that went pop and started smoking But not a huge explosion. I've not had anything like that in so far, touch wood, in my lifetime. Nothing's gone completely. <laughs> Maybe one day that's the way I'll, I'll go, I think. You know, it'll be on my headstone. Died in a horrific Hoover accident. It exploded in his face. It, it went off in his face. And uh, that's the end of... That's the end of me. But anyway, so check out my Sensatronic System 1, the Electrolux, I think it was the 560, and the Miele, I can't remember the model number, but there was a picture in the thumbnail of it. And I did a bit of a slow motion shot of that for the added dramatic impact. But it is always, as you've, if you've watched me for a while, it is always quite an apprehensive thing when I switch on a second-hand vacuum cleaner for the first time. It's always, oh, is this one, is this the one that's going to be the end of me? But then again, if you've seen the video, it means I've survived it and I managed to upload the video. Somebody's answered that. Well, that's not the point of this, is it? But anyway, somebody has put an 80s meal underneath, Mila underneath. But there was, there were more than the Mila that blew up. But Mila had the most dramatic flash. Robot vac, Robo vac collector. I wonder what he collects. Hi Roger, I love your videos. I remember watching them even as a small kid. Ha ha. And today I have plenty of Zelmas and I collect robot vacuums. So my question is, are you going to get some more robot vacuums? And if yes, which ones? Thanks. Well, I unboxed a Dyson Christmas Day, didn't I? Uh, I think Sarah Jessica Parker gave me that one. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I've got the older Dyson 360i i've got one of the roombas that empties itself um i've got a lot that i've not bothered showing you yet because to demonstrate a robot vacuum properly you need a tidy clean clutter-free house you can't use a robot vacuum in a cluttered house and at the moment it's a bit cluttered so as soon as i've done some spring cleaning and i've sold a lot more vacuums and i've got larger areas of uncluttered carpet and floor i'll be getting out my robotic vacuums. I almost bought a shark one which was on Amazon.de, German Amazon. It was a very good price. I think it's about £220 and it was one of the self-emptying ones. So you can get shark robot cleaners in Europe but not at the moment in the UK. A lady from Shark said they were they might be launching them in the UK but they haven't yet. 
So I nearly bought that, but then the price went up about £100. So I might get the Shark if it comes down again. If it's around 200 220 I'll I'll try one of those. So that's that's the only one I'm thinking of getting at the moment, which would be a Shark. I don't know the model number. So there you go. Right, I've answered your question. Da, da, da. Right. Right, well I'll answer this because Teresa comments a lot on my on this channel and my other channel, so I'll I'll make an exception for Teresa who has a vacuum obsessed son. Hi Roger, Merry Christmas. Our family desperately needs to know. Uh, does Mark have any sort of extreme obsession like does he collect brooms or some other cleaning related item? In our house, Ben's vacuum enthusiasm has made all of us love vacuums as a result. We're just wondering what Mark thinks of it all and have he, has he ever surprised you with a new vacuum? Well, I'll have to say, if it wasn't for Mark, I probably would have a million subscribers. I'd be putting out a vacuum video every day. And um, yeah, no, he doesn't. He doesn't have any sort of obsessions. Um, he likes cars, as in he doesn't collect cars, but he's a petrol head. He watches YouTube videos about cars, so he's into cars. But not upset not like an obsession um, he has more shoes than the average person I feel uh, I wouldn't say that's a collection though so um, most of the time I th I th don't think Mark is particularly impressed with um, what I do to be honest because it is a bit disruptive uh, sometimes the mess I can make. Um, so no, 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 I get no support from my partner over what I do on YouTube and I'm fine with that. So yeah, a bit of a downer that answer, but no, I say if I lived, if I lived on my own, I think I'd be able to do a lot more than I can do now because when you live with someone, you've got to take their needs into account and you can't be doing everything you want to do so um but then again he does curb some of my excesses if i lived on my own i'd probably be floor to ceiling vacuum cleaners all over the house i wouldn't be able to move at all but having someone else ensures that you keep your obsession under wraps slightly because you've really got to as i say take into consideration their needs as well as your own so that i hope is a comprehensive answer that's the only non vacuum well it's sort of vacuum related but I'm not answering anything else too personal because it's none of your business so that was just for you Teresa here is a vacuum related question from Joey Wiegand I've pronounced that wrong I, I expect hey Roger I was wondering if Aeris dash Electrolux vacuum cleaners were ever available in the UK I know that the Swedish Electrolux company is available in both countries now, but I wasn't sure about Aeris. Love your videos and have been a long time fan now for about five to six years. I always look forward to them. Hope you had a Merry Christmas and wishing you a great 2022. Well, thank you, Joey. Um, as far as I know, and somebody might be able to correct me in the comments, we've not had Aeris branded vacuum cleaners in the UK and the Electrolux ones we had we did have some Swedish made Electrolux ones but we there was a factory in Luton Bedfordshire that churned out Electrolux vacuums for the UK and possibly exported them to other countries but we did get some made in Sweden Electroluxes now the Electrolux brand is basically gone from the UK and we now get AEG branded vacuum cleaners that would be branded Electrolux in other countries. So to answer your question, no, as far as I know, we didn't have the Aeris brand in the UK. I've never come across any anyway. So that's your answer, Joey. Here's John Smith, who looks very like in this picture, Gordon Ramsay. So hopefully he's not been swearing in the comment because I won't be able to read it out. 
Right. John has a couple of questions, actually. What's the best Christmas gift you, you've ever gotten? How old were you when you got it? And if you could use one brand of vacuum cleaner from now on, what brand would it be? Merry Christmas, Roger. Can't wait to see the vid. But I can't answer that. The best Christmas gift? I can't recall. Probably wouldn't have been a vacuum cleaner because I can only recall getting one vacuum cleaner for Christmas. And I think I had to put some money towards it because it was above the budget my mum and dad had for their children. So I had to pay for half of it. And that was a Hoover Sensotronic System 20. Um, can't answer that. I can't think of the best gift. I really can't, to be honest. No. Maybe, maybe when I got a bike, maybe my Rally Grifter bike I got, because that would have been quite a big thing to to get me for Christmas. So I'm, I'll say my Rally Grifter bike. Um, if I could only use one brand of vacuum cleaner from now on, I think it's it will be SIBO, to be honest. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know I've always advocated SIBO, even though they've never given me a free vacuum, I will still say in my experience for all the vacuums I've used if I had to choose one brand obviously I wouldn't want to get rid of all my classics because my Hoover are my favorite classic brand but as far as modern machines I Hoover you know I just don't like them anymore um, but if I had to live the rest of my life and had to use a vacuum brand and they were still manufacturing new models then yes it would be SIBO. The Felix and the Powerhead cylinders are my favourite. If I could have two I would have a Felix and I'd also have I think probably well either the D4 Premium or the E3 Premium. I'm veering towards the E3 Premium because it is a lot lighter and more compact than the D4. The thing I don't like about the E Three premium is the bulky hose. It's just absolutely massive. The, the width of the hose is too big. I can't see any, it won't make a huge difference in the performance of that cleaner. If they'd put a slightly longer hose, but not, not tapered, just the same width of hose all through because it just, it's just makes it awkward. But you've got the best of both worlds. You've got a lightweight compact cleaner with a power head but the big bulky hose just spoils that machine for me. But yeah, SIBO predictably would be the brand if I could only own one brand. Obviously I'd have to have carpet washers and things as well. I mean, SIBO do their duo dry cleaning system, which is okay for maintaining carpets and they do their disco floor polisher. But um, for deep cleaning, I still would want to keep my Bissell big green clean machine Right. Well, I won't answer. I did say vacuum related, so that's not vacuum related. So I won't answer that one. Right. Here's a question I absolutely hate, but I'll attempt to answer it. I think I've answered part of it anyway. This is from Kishan Patel. Hi, Roger. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I just have the one question and that is if you could only have one upright, one cylinder, and one handheld for the rest of your life, which would they be? Well, that's three questions, I think. Don't you, Kishan? Three. Right. You see, it's hard, you know, I can answer based on what vacuum cleaners are available now, but I'm not sure what developments there's going to be. So I'm just going to have an answer, say I've only got two months to live. So, I think I've answered it. The upright, I think, would be Sibo Felix. The cylinder would be D4. Uh, I'm going to say the E3 Premium. Sibo Felix, E3 Premium, again Sibo, and a handheld. Oh, see, I don't often use, use handhelds. I suppose a cordless one if it's handheld. Now, do you mean just handheld or one that I can use like a cordless stick? You weren't very. Uh, 
clear on that. Um, a handheld. Um, based, based on the fact that this handheld is very good on my stairs, but I don't like a lot about it for normal for floor use, but for if I was just using it as a handheld for stairs and upholstery, I would say the Dyson, either a V11, the V11, I think, because I don't like this the new anti-screw thing, anti-hair screw wrap tool. It's not as good. I prefer the previous small motorized head with the proper brushes. So um, I will say the V, I'd say a Dyson V11, um, with the pet mini motorized tool as a handheld although that wouldn't last me a lifetime well i don't think any of those would but i've got more chance of having the sebos lasting longer than the dyson okie dokie the best vacuum collector asks hi roger how long would you say you have been collecting vacuum cleaners for and if you can remember what was the first vacuum cleaner that went into your collection um Yes, I've answered this before. People are commenting. Uh, probably have a different answer for you. Is that a van? Oh, it's no, it's, it's a van that delivers tea and coffee to the village just gone by. It's Bank Holiday Monday when I'm recording this. So anyway, yes, well, when I got my first new vacuum cleaner, Uber Sensatronic Total System 5, that was in 1980 four or three I can't remember anyway it was the early 80s I I got my first new cleaner but I've had cleaners before then I had second-hand ones um, so I, I would say probably the early 80s and I can't remember what the very first one I got but it would have been a second-hand machine it probably would have been something like a Hoover Junior something like that I can't remember long gone now of course Right, here's a long one. Kosh Studios, is that? These lenses are no good. Hi Roger, my family and I, we have two vacuum cleaners, a Vorthuk Kobold from round about 1983 and a Cebo Airbelt E-Series. Brand new, got rid of our Dyson DC52 because we only had trouble with it. My question, Volverk recommend that you only use their own filter bags and none other that you might find at the supermarket due to possible damages that might occur. Is that true or can I also use other bags? I've used the knockoff bags for the Volverk before and have noticed that the air didn't escape and the indicator lit up to change the bag although it was empty. It would be amazing if you could answer the question and give me a shout out because a lot of people in my hometown, including a few of my friends, have Volvec vacuums and it would be very good to know what the truth is about the bags. Anyhow, enjoy the holiday and stay healthy. Personally, well, if you've got an older Volvec, it's up to you. If you want to save a few, whatever currency, pounds, dollars, euros, whatever currency is in your country. If you want to save a bit of money, you can get an imitation bag. Personally, I always prefer to use genuine bags unless the replacement bags are an upgrade because I will use a new fleece bag in a vintage Hoover rather than a single lead or double lead paper bag that would be original. If there is an upgraded bag available that's better at filtering the dust, then I'd use that. Personally, I only have modern for works now and I will only use the genuine bags and I find them in my Tiger and in my uprights, my cordless upright and my mains powered upright. I'll always and only use the genuine bags and they filter very, very well. The thing I like about the bags, especially in my Tiger, is they don't emit odor. I've not found them smelling. And with me, I don't use a vacuum all the time, so I would use my Tiger for a bit and then get bored with it, put it away, but with dirt in the bag. But when I come to use it again, I don't, I don't have that telltale musty odor that you often get if you've left the dirt in the bag. 
So the little bits of carbon uh, granules that are in that bag must do something. It must stop the, the dirt uh, the, the dirt from smelling. Plus, I've never noticed when I've taken bags out, genuine four vert bags, I've never noticed any dust whatsoever in the bag compartment. So personally for me, I will only use genuine bags in a Vorwerk cleaner. And that's what I suggest to you and whoever else is watching, use the genuine bags because they are worth the extra money, in my opinion and experience. I hope that's answered your question. Well, it has. <laughs> it has answered your question. Whether or not it's the answer you wanted, I'm not sure. I just can't see where I'm at to with the uh, dubri. I can't see anything. Fl I'm not flashing yet. I'm just worried about running out of doodah memory because I haven't got a huge amount of doodah on me. Do on me. What's him? I call it. What you know, thingy. You know that thing is stick in the side. SD card. Keith Fletcher. Hi Roger. I hope you are having a great month. Well, it's only the start of the month, Keith, but it's okay. Thank you. My question is, how do you look for the vacuum cleaner you buy? And how do you know what you have and what might be missing in your collection? Thank you and have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Normally I know what I've got because I've filmed it on YouTube and I can check, oh, have I got that one? And I can just go on my YouTube channel, search for it and think, oh yeah, I've got one. But normally I do know what I've got. Sometimes I will buy a vacuum model that I have got already if it's a better condition example, you know. So if I've got a beaten up Hoover Senior and see one that's in much better condition, I'll buy that and sell the, beat, the more beaten up one. Um, how do I look for the vacuum? I know what's missing in my collection because I don't have it. I'm starting to flash now. So um, I'll, this will be the last question on this SD card. Um, often it's not a case of searching, although on eBay I do have key searches that if somebody lists a vacuum with those search terms, it will show up. Um, a lot of the vac vacuums I buy are on impulse and I just see them and like the look of them. So I think I've got most of the vacuums I want as part of my collection. There are a few Holy Grail ones, which is unlikely I'll get, but if they turn up, I'll, I'll try and get them. Um, as far as reviewing new ones, there's many different reasons why I'd get one. Sometimes it's just, I like the look of it. Other times I might think, I think it'll be a popular video because it's a popular brand. So I'll get it because I know it'll get the views. Other times I'll buy a vacuum because I've seen an absolute bargain and I can't refuse at that price. Um, so there's many different reasons why I buy different vacuum cleaners. Um, emotional, price, commercial reasons, because I think it'll help my channel. So many different reasons. Um, and I will spend more on a vacuum that I've got an emotional attachment to that's when I spend the silly money to try and get a vacuum cleaner that I used to own in the past and regretted selling. So that's when whoever sells one of those is going to be quids in if I decide to bid because I've lost out on many vacuums because other people have had even deeper pockets but there's some that I'll pay silly amounts of money for for a vacuum that's not worth that but it's worth it to me because it's got an emotional connection um, and, and it wouldn't be one that's necessarily going to be popular on my channel. Anyway, I think I've answered. I'm going to have to cut the video for now. I'll be back shortly. I've just got to slot in a new card to answer the next person, who is Elliot Carver. Okie dokie. Well, I've got 51 minutes on this card. If I've got uh, too many questions, I'll have to split this video up, as I've, I had to do with my... Uh, Shout outs for the young vacuum fans. I think I went to five parts with that one. I don't think I've got quite so many requests on this video. So here's Elliot. Hi Roger. I hope you're having a wonderful run up to Christmas and enjoying the season. Well, it's all gone now. It's all in the past. But um, I'd say no, I haven't, didn't have a wonderful run up to be honest and uh, didn't really enjoy it. So anyway, 
Elliot asks, my question for you is, which vacuum cleaner left you with the most crashing sense of disappointment this year and which one left you pleasantly surprised? Oh, well, it's 2022 now. So this is the most disappointing so far, this absolutely awful Vax blade. And um, so far, the one that I've been most pleased with is the Miele Boost CX-1. But that's this year. I think you mean 2021. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've had so many. Um, I think I was pleasantly surprised, which you haven't seen yet. You saw it briefly in a video. The uh, Vorwerk VB100 ridiculously overpriced battery powered cleaner. I quite like that actually. It's a bit creaky for such an expensive machine, but it does like my carpet in the living room. It picks up well, very light, easy to handle. I've not really got to grips with all the accessories yet. You'll see that in a future video. Um, that's off the top of my head. And the most disappointing. Crikey, what's the most disappointing? Um, keep checking. I'm expecting a delivery today, so keep seeing if they're coming. It's not a vacuum. Um, I can't, I can't, to be honest, I can't remember last week, let alone last year, uh, which was last week, the year. Last week was last year. I don't know, I can't remember. There's probably a lot that I've been disappointed with. But I don't think, you know, I've, I've been buying vacuum cleaners for so long, I, I kind of get a feel of what's what I'm going to like and what I'm not going to like. So I can't recall, obviously I've probably had disappointments when a vacuum's arrived damaged. That's been more disappointing than anything, when it might have been a vacuum I've really wanted for a long time and it's been smashed. So it'll prob probably be because it's been smashed in the post and not because I was disappointed with the vacuum per se, because, you know, even though I've, I've last year I did manage to get my hands on quite a lot of vacuums I've wanted for a long time. Normally they tend to be vacuums I've owned before. And although there's one particular one you've not seen yet, I paid a fortune for, um, and I'm so glad I've got one but when I used it, I thought, crikey, this is not practical for, to use this day and age. So it's sort of disappointing that way that it's such an iconic classic vacuum for me. But when I started using it again, I thought, because I've had so much more experience using more modern cleaners, I'm thinking, blimey, oh, it was OK back in the 80s. But now it, I could not drag this thing around my house and use it and I wouldn't want to because I want to preserve it. I'm going to use it and show it in a video but so that's a bit disappointing but I wasn't I wasn't crushed by the disappointment. I was sort of like yeah things have moved on. It's nice to have a collection of classics. Some I like using more than others. Even some of the really old ones are a pleasure to use. Um, but obviously, to keep my home clean, I would use, on the whole, a modern vacuum cleaner. Anyway, thank you for your question, Elliot. I will, um, I think I will split these up because they're going to be too long. So I'll just do two more answers. I'll answer two more questions in this video. I'll pause it and then I'll start part two. This one is from Alison Pratt, who has definitely has a young vacuum fan I've shouted out to. Hi Roger, we have a cordless shark anti-hair wrap and had it for over a year. Despite cleaning it out regularly, I can never say that word properly, including vacuuming the filters, I find it's got pretty noisy and motor seems more high-pitched. Not sure if it's been overused and abused by my son, using it for mess tests, rolled oats in particular. Any advice would be appreciated. The vacuum itself seems to work fine. Well, I don't really know. I mean, I like sharks, but they're not a brand that's going to last you years and years. It's possible if it's sounding more high pitched that dust has got into the motor. 
if the the fan of the motor has, has got dust on it it can unbalance it and make it sound noisier i know that happens with vintage machines i'm assuming it'll happen with a modern machine i know of Miele vacuum cleaners that have been used with incorrect bags or the bag has burst and and dust has got through into the motor and cake to the motor uh, fan and that makes it noisy and unbalanced it's possibly that you're doing the right thing by keeping the filters clean um, it would need taking apart to clean out the motor I mean all I can possibly suggest is getting and I'm sure you've got other vacuums like a Henry just get another vacuum and just um, with the shark not switched on but just try and poke it in various orifices of the shark so air is, is being pulled through the machine using another vacuum so um, I don't know if the best way would be to try and connect which one have you got I don't know what cordless shark you've got whether it's that one with a hose or whether it's the lift away one or the handheld but you could just get another suction cleaner and just securely fit it to the end with the shark switched off and just try and s you might hear the motor spinning with the suction of the other cleaner doing that you might be able to take all the filters out and just try and suck suck through the motor and see if that might dislodge something um, if it gets worse and it's still under guarantee then contact shark they might send you out a new motor unit for your machine that's all I can suggest at the moment last one for this video then this is from Nick O uh, hope you are well Roger we haven't seen a Volvic video update in some time I know they fell out of your good graces at one point but that last year you were starting to enjoy them again. Any updates on if slash when we might see a video on the VV100 or Tiger? I'm very curious if you were ever able to resolve the issues you had with your Tiger. Happy holidays. The issue with the Tiger was resolved. Uh, Volvo wanted me to send the whole cleaner back to them, which I didn't want to do because the issue was with was with the power head and I knew it was the power head because I took it off the Tiger and put it on my VK200 and it had the same issue. It just, what was the issue? I think the red light was flashing. It just wasn't working. So I said to them, look, I'm not sending the whole thing back. I'll just send the head. It's definitely the head. So I had to return the head I think they paid the return costs. I got it back fixed, but I also got it back scratched. So I wasn't very happy about that. It was as if it was, it, it was, as if it was on a workshop bench with nothing to protect it, not like a, not a piece of carpet or a towel that you know most people would protect. Um, you know, if I was servicing something, I'd do it on a bit of carpet or a towel to stop it scratching. So it, it was repaired, but it was scratched. So I wasn't happy. So it works. Um, so that was resolved. So yes, you're going to see all the Vorvex again. In fact, um, spoiler alert, the, um, is it the Tiger? Oh yes, I'm, I'm planning on having the Tiger as vacuum of the month. So you'll be seeing the Tiger again with all the accessories and I'll be showing you everything of the Tiger. And at some point, yes, I will be showing you the VB100 as well as the VK200. Hopefully I'll get all up to date with the Fovercs this year. So you will be seeing them. I will say to you that they are grossly overpriced for what they are. I like them, but they are nowhere near worth the money they ask for them. If you want to spend your money on one, it's up to you. They're ridiculously expensive. Um, I like, I like them. I don't like them as much as I would have liked them if they'd been a quarter of the price. They're too expensive, ridiculously. Ah, I get so worked up. Anyway, I was silly enough to buy them, but you'll see them. And if you want to buy one after you've seen my videos, that's up to you. But they're not good value for money. That's all I'll say. Just like Dyson's. I don't think Dyson's a good value for money either, but they're certainly cheaper than the Fovex. On that note, I'll end this video and uh, start a new video. I don't think I'll bother changing my 
jumper. Daisy is still here asleep. So uh, tune in for the next video on my Q&A session coming up very soon on my channel. If you've got any further questions, don't bother because I'm, I'm not going to, well, I'm not going to, you can ask questions. I'll try and answer as many as I can under the videos, but this is the last, you know, time for a while that I'll be doing, you know, shout out, answering your questions in a video. You know what I mean. Oh dear, I need to lie down and I've hardly started. Okay, thanks for watching this video. If you've had a question you wanted to, if you've already asked the question, is what I mean to say, then tune in for the next video and I might answer it in that video. And depending how much I go on in that video, there might be a part three, who knows? Hopefully not. So until part two, thanks for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye for now.